Well, chances are that like many others, you have at some point been confused by pulses per rotation, or as they're often called, steps per rotation. Well, it turns out it's pretty simple, as long as you have a process. And today we will discuss our favorite, the 100 millimeter line test method. But first a bit of background. Let's talk about what we really mean by rotary calibration or setting up your steps. In a nutshell, you want your physical engraving on a cup, tumbler, or bottle to be the exact same size and shape as what you have showing in your laser or inside your graphics program. So for instance, if you have a 2 by 3 inch logo set up in Lightburn, you'll expect the engraving in the cup to also be 2 by 3 inches. So why do we use 100 millimeters? You don't have to. Any dimensions will work, and if you hate the metric system, you can also use inches. So let's go ahead. Step 1. Preparation You should start by finding the simplest and most uniform tumbler you could find. We want to take any diameter variations or any tempering out of the equation. A 20 ounce skinny tumbler would work best for this purpose. Don't use mugs, bottles, or other odd shaped objects. Take a piece of painter's tape, stick it to a table, and with a ruler and a marker, draw a 100 millimeter line. Or you can use 4 inches if you'd like. Now make a short perpendicular line at each end. Remove the tape from the table and cut the excess and stick it on your tumbler, making sure it's flat. Try to also place the tape as straight as possible. Now let's talk about software. So for this tutorial, we'll be using Lightburn. And first, let's configure a laser controller through Lightburn to work with your rotary. If you're using Pyburn, <coughs> which by the way, it's the best rotary on the planet, just Google it. You will find the suggested settings for your machine in our user manual. Open your rotary setup dialog and type in the steps per rotation and the diameter settings. The diameter setting will always be about 62 or 64 millimeters for the pie burn but the steps will actually be unique depending on the laser that you have. If you don't know your exact settings, you can always start with some number like 10,000 and work from there. After all, the whole point of this exercise is to find out your settings. Don't forget to toggle the rotary switch and click OK. Now, let's draw that rectangle. Now, we should also probably mention the reason we're doing a rectangle and not just a line is to give you that extra time to see the outline made by the red dot of the laser. It slows down the laser after it goes all the way to the end of the long side of the rectangle. Now, draw a long and fairly thin rectangle and click here to unlock the aspect ratio. Change the height to be 100 millimeters. And the width doesn't really matter that much, but Let's just make it 10 millimeters just for the sake of this exercise. Now our speed and power settings really don't matter unless you're planning to burn it in. But please choose start from user origin and job origin it must be at the top of the red dot. Now this is important. We actually have a whole video on user origin. Now send the file to your laser and name it something like 100 millimeter test. Now we'll talk about the laser. Put the tumbler on the rotary and position the head of the laser just so the red dot is at the very beginning of the 100 millimeter line you've taped on. Now reduce your framing speed by hitting the speed button and change the value to 30 millimeters per second. Jog the rotary with the up and down keys to make sure it can rotate all the way to the end of the line. Now come back to the starting point and press the origin button for the laser to remember this as your starting position. Load your 100 millimeter file and press frame. The laser should spin the tumbler by 100 millimeters and then move to the left. 
and finally rotate back to the starting position. If instead your tumbler turns in the opposite direction, simply reposition the laser at the end of the line. Hit origin and try framing again. Now getting the settings right. If your laser dot outlines your 100 millimeter line perfectly, you're all set. However, if it didn't, you will need to adjust your steps. You're adjusting your steps per rotation, or you could also be tuning the roller diameter settings. Just as a rule of thumb, we recommend adjusting steps per rotation if you test was way, way, way off. But if you miss the end of the 100 millimeter line, but just a little bit, it might be easier to adjust the diameter settings instead. Let's look at this example. Uh, we're going to be using the EN Mira 7 laser, which is a great laser, by the way. And the ideal steps per rotation settings are 25,000 steps. However, if I didn't know that and I put 10,000 steps, here's what would happen during the test. As you can see, it barely reached even half of the line. So we now know that we need to increase our steps per rotation. So let's double them and make it 20,000. Ah, we're getting closer, but we're still not there. Okay, let's add another 5,000 steps and make it 25,000. Ooh, that is close. Let's keep our steps as is. And now we're gonna fine tune the roller diameter for a more mm, fine tuned measure. So unlike with steps, increasing this number will turn our rotary by a shorter distance. So let's decrease this value by one millimeter and make it 62 millimeters. Bingo. So remember, if your rotary reaches short of expected distance, increase the steps per rotation or decrease the diameter. And don't forget, if it's off by a lot, you should adjust the steps, but if you're off just a little bit, adjust the diameter. If your rotary goes past the expected distance, then decrease your steps per rotation or increase the diameter. If you follow these instructions exactly, you will find your true settings for the part of the object that's on the drive wheels. And these settings will work just like magic on any diameter object. That's right. You don't have to change them between a 20 ounce or a 30 ounce tumbler or even if you're doing a 64 ounce growler. Those things are beasts and you still don't need to adjust your settings. But let me just reiterate, it will only work for the part of the object that's directly on the drive wheels. This means that if you're engraving an object like a bottle that's got a narrow neck and a wider body and if you place the neck on the drive wheels, your settings will be off. Of course they will be off because they are for the neck that's on the drive wheels and it won't engrave right on the actual body, which has a bigger diameter. So if you want to engrave the bottle's neck, you're good, but who wants to engrave the neck anyway? So what do you do? Well, you've got three choices. Number one, and probably the most popular, which is just remove the clamp. It's possible to engrave these without a clamp. They're very well balanced. Now, if you have the part of the object that you're engraving on the drive wheels, the rules will apply and your normal settings will work. All right, number two, you can do another 100 millimeter line test for that specific bottle. You can find the correct settings for that bottle, but just make sure to only use them on this object and they won't work for anything else. And the last option is you can make an adapter or you can buy one on Etsy and you can screw that on top of the on top of the bottle right in the neck and it basically it cheats and it makes the diameters of the bottle and the neck the very same well that brings us to the end thank you so much for following us through this tutorial and if you're looking to buy or upgrade your rotary please support us purchase a fiber it is the very best most versatile tool on the market that you will find it'll make your engraving a breeze Ask anybody who has one, they just love it. And please don't forget to subscribe, hit that bell button, and you're gonna see lots of awesome tutorials coming on this YouTube channel. 
All the best and happy engraving.